the sports top players roll into Dallas this Super Bowl Sunday, the third stop here on the Winter Tour. It's the Pro Bowlers Tour on ESPN. Let's meet our eight finalists along with their Super Bowl picks. Our tournament leader, he's led wire to wire, Steve Jaros. Qualifying in the number two spot, looking for his first tour victory, Mark Scroggins. In the number three position, 16-time national tour winner, Storman, Norm Duke. Number four seed, former Rookie of the Year, making his second straight TV Finals, Chris Barnes. In the number five spot, making his first telecast since 1993, Pete McCordick. Bowling in the opening match, making his second straight TV appearance, Wayne Webb. Qualifying number seven, nine national titles, 11 regional wins, Steve Hoskins. And our final spot, he fired a 298 in the final game to move into today's championship field, Eric Forkel. at Don Carter's All-Star Lanes West. It's the championship round finals of the Brunswick Pro Source Don Carter Classic. Hi, everyone. Phil Ferguson along with Hall of Famer Marshall Holman in the broadcast booth. And we are set for our opening three players shootout. Marshall, Wayne Webb, 20 titles. Steve Hoskins with nine. Eric Corkle, five. I'm not quite sure... Any of the players have an advantage here in the opening match? Well, in watching the practice, Eric Forkel had problems with the right lane. He bowled almost exclusively on the right-hand lane, so we'll see how that affects him. Both right-handers said the lanes were fairly close from left to right. That's soft 10 for Wayne Webb, and a, a good early shot. Just wasn't able to get the six pin to kick out the 10. A few 10 pins this week. Always the key to be able to knock down those tens. Good look at Steve Hoskins' opening shot. Hoskins going with more revolutions. A power player comes in high, leaves the four pin. Webb sets up now just to pick up that ten pin. Three players in the opening match. Hoskins watching that ball going in a tad high, leaving the four pin. Now he's up to convert, and no problem. Now we take a look at Eric Forkel, the left-hander. Shot 298, his final game to sneak in out of Northridge, California. Yes. Got a strike there, Eric Forkel, a little bit of a grunt with that shot. As I said earlier, the left-hand lane was not bothering Forkel. He was practicing a lot on the right-hand lane. Power strike for Webb as he drives the pins to the left-hand side. Boy, he has bowled great to start off the year 2000. Well, he has. Watch the ball as it comes in a little bit light in the pocket. Ball hits the five pin. Five pin goes left, takes care of the rest. Hoskins working on a spare. Well, not to be left out. Now, everybody has struck. Webb and Hoskins, spare strike. Forkel, he has one strike in the first frame. Now he's up looking for a double on the lane that could give him some problems. He was very happy uh, the other night. That final 298 game said it was the first time he ever shot a big game to make it into the final. So here he is in that number eight spot with a chance to win it all. Oh. Oh. Ah, a little hard. Ah. Still doing a little fishing on the right-hand lane. Ball driving through, going through the nose. Fortunate, the seven pin, the last one to fall, just leaving the six and the 10. Forkel, a very good spare shooter, should have no problem with the 6-10. And uh, no problem with that spare. So Forkel with a strike spare. Hoskins and Wayne Webb starting off spare strike. All players with 20 in that opening frame. Here from Dallas. Great to have you by here on Super Bowl Sunday. Wayne Webb has uh, struggled last year. Earned just over 27,000, but has pulled very well. Made the right adjustment. Moved a little deeper on the lane. Able to knock down all 10 pins. High flush in the pocket. 
Hoskins with nine national titles, ranked 10th by the PBA. And something must have distracted Steve. It's going to start it over again. Third frame. This one to Ty Webb. A bit fortunate, Marshall. Yeah, he tickled him over. <laughs> nice going, go. Go, going over to, to thank some of his fans. <laughs> bit rip uh, Marshall, you, you talk about uh, players right now uh, being distracted a bit, but yet people say, boy, you know, when they're bowling, there's a lot going on. The television, TV day, a little bit different. Forkel now on the third. Eric Forkel now strikes fair strike. He trails by 10. Our early leaders, Wayne Webb and Steve Hoskins. Back with more in a minute. Back here, beautiful Dallas, Webb and Hoskins on top. Eric Forkel trails by just 10. Don Carter, legend, has meant so much to this game, Marshall. Well, it's been a privilege to know Don Carter for my entire career, and he's Mr. Bowling. Say no more. Well, bringing him back. Will it go? Look at that break for Webb, the 4-9. 4-9 standing. Looked like the 4-pin was going to fall into the 9-pin, but watch this. It's actually the nine pin that'll fall into the four. Looks like the four's gonna, four's gonna teeter over, but a little help from the nine into the four, and a big thank you from Webb. Hoskins, oh, and the solid eight. Oh, and a solid eight for Hoskins after the great break from Webb. You see the happiness on his face getting that super break. I'm sure he planned it that way, didn't he, Phil? <laughs> Well, Webb now three in a row, and then Hoskins the bad break. Uh, pocket hit and leaves the eight pin. Forkel now trying to get in the match. Oh. Oh. Oh, you could hear him say no when he released that ball. Still not sure what to do in that lane. Hoskins knows what to do. Pick up this eight pin and then start striking again when he gets up in the fifth frame. Forkel with a spare will trail by 20. Hoskins trails by 11. Wayne Webb sitting on the bench smiling right now. Bring it back and picking it up. Forkel with that spare now in the fourth frame. And strike, spare, strike, spare. And Webb after a spare with three in a row. The PBA Hall of Famer with 20 national titles. Another one. You know, sometimes luck does play a part in every game, certainly bowling, as well as many others. Webb feeling it right now. Hoskins in the fifth after that spare. And what should have been four strikes in a row for Hoskins, but the solid eight took 21 pins out of Hoskins. Look at Steve Hoskins, the high backswing, real solid at the line, and a lot of lift wrist. Fork 11 the fifth. He has struck on this left hand lane a couple of times. Can't figure oh. out the right Come hand on, ball. Yeah. Fork continues to strike on the left hand lane, but can't put anything together. Has a seat. We'll think about his next shot midway through the uh, fifth frame. Wayne Webb on top over Hoskins. A 21 pin lead. You know, Forkel averaged 253 on this television pair during the tournament, but uh, right now can't seem to find a double. Well, Webb has found a couple of doubles and put them together. So he has four in a row, trying to make it five here in the sixth frame, the 1980 PBA Player of the Year. Well, ball just keeps getting higher and higher and higher. He tripped out the 4-9 last time on lane 46, but that shot was bad in his release. The ball was down quick. 
hooked early, right through the nose, tough spare. Hoskins really has thrown the best game, but he still trails right here, Marshall. Well, he may not trail after Webb shoots his spare. Very difficult 3 6 9 10. You're right, Hoskins certainly making the quality shots. This is to maintain his lead. And a great conversion from Webb. Keeps his seven pin lead. This is Hoskins' last shot on lane 45, and a mirror image of the previous one, except this time, eight pin falls. Forkel trails by 26, trying to cut that lead now to 16 with a big double, but he hasn't figured this lane out yet, Marshall. He's been high both times. Just to give it more room. Boy, liked it off his hand, but the six pin will not trip. I agree, it was a good shot. Yeah, Players, you, you, you can tell off your hand if it's a good shot, right? Close. You can, it's, as close. soon as it goes off your hand, you can always tell if you've made a made a quality shot or not. Sometimes the pins don't respond, though. And he picks up the single pin spare. We got a dandy here in the first match from Dallas. Wayne Webb on top by seven. They're racing to the finish line here. We are now in the seventh frame. Wayne Webb on top, Marshall, but kind of a tenuous lead. He's, he's struggled a little bit the last few frames. He's up by seven, and he certainly has. The last three shots have all come in high, especially the last one on 46. Looked like a cleaner release. But once again, ball creeping up high, leaving only the six pin. Lane seemed to be breaking down for Webb. Needs to move further left on the approach. Get more oil in the first part of the shot. Hoskins can make it three in a row right now and take the lead. Oh, yeah. Boy, he had the, in the fourth frame left that stubborn eight pin, or he would uh, have six in a row. But he has taken the lead as Webb now picks up the single pin spare. Forkel still not out of the match, Marshall. No, with Forkel right now only 29 pins down. Certainly has the opportunity to bowl a good game. If he would go strike out, he could shoot 240. On last year, uh, the outdoor event, Bryant Park. Oh. He just seems like he's trying to fight it and, and muscle it through. Where's the love? <laughs> where, where are the where strikes? Where's the love? <laughs> Try to convert here and still remain in the match through seven frames of the Brunswick Pro Source Don Carter Classic. Now becoming more and more difficult for Forkel. Now let's take a look in the bag and for Wayne Webb, he's throwing a Mike Albee MVP bowling ball with a four and a quarter. Big strike for Wayne. Now he has come back, gets it out a little bit. Splatters him, 165 through 7. But right now, Hoskins in charge and trying to make it four in a row. Hoskins with a possible 269. Got it out and it's coming. Well, Hoskins really asserting himself. And he's a great television bowler. Has a very good record. Certainly, look at the confidence on his face. It just, uh, he knows... He knows he's got it going. Well, he's 33 and 18 in front of the lights with a 226 average and 25 appearances. Forkel's got to get it going. Uh. Down by 40. I uh. give. You all win. I give. Best for give. Forkel right now, 218, and he says he gives. He he hasn't, but 218 probably not going to be enough. Well, in this town right now, it looks like a two-horse race. Seven pin. Seven pin. So we take a look at the scoreboard. Steve Hoskins on top. By 14 over Webb. Well, now let's take a look at what's in the bag. Wayne Webb throwing a Mike Albee 
MVP. He's got a four and a quarter inch from the pin with 600 grit, so it's got some teeth in it. It's a reactive look with surface to smooth out the back end reaction. Well, nothing very smooth there. Every shot has been high for Webb since he stopped striking in the fifth frame, and it's caught up to him. Hoskins has bowled a near perfect game, leaving just the four pin in the first frame and the fourth frame a eight pin. Red strikes. Now that shot right there could have about salted it away for Hoskins, but leaves the ringing 10. Webb now needs to regroup himself. He can pick up this split, and it's makeable. Get the ball to the right hand side of the three pin, drive it over into the four seven. He'll still have a chance. Oh, got too much of the three pin. Puts him down to a maximum of 221. Look out. Oh, it hangs on. <laughs> Hoskins felt like he had it all the way. I wasn't so sure. Hoskins now by 27. And Fork will oh. Ninth frame. Maybe he's not grunting enough. <laughs> Uh, he's working hard, but Pin's not responding. Now, for any chance, Webb must strike out. There's the first one. Finally got the ball to come in light in the pocket, Phil. Game go by, goes by very, very fast. And Webb uh, through five frames. He had a spare, then four in a row. And hit some tough times as Forkel picks up the spare. solid 10 for Webb and the job right now for Steve Hoskins is just to stay behind the foul line keep the ball on the lane and should easily advance to the next match eight players in the championship round finals Hoskins that's enough Hoskins now moves on to match two so we have three players in the first match three in the second match three in the semifinal match and then head-to-head -head for the championship Boy, Webb has bowled very well, though, to start 2000, uh, making a couple of telecasts. Hoskins trying to get lined up now for match two. Well, Hoskins certainly bowled by far the best game of the three competitors. That doesn't always mean you advance, but in this case, the shot making did win out. Oh, maybe. Here she comes. <laughs> yeah, I got one on that lane. He knew he could do it. <laughs> See Forkel with a little bit of a Texas bird dog coming over there. <laughs> Knocking it down. And then have a seat. All right, you can enjoy the rest of the show. Steve Hoskins is going to move on now into match two and he's thinking a little bit despite shooting a 237 great game from steve hoskins hoskins now will face chris barnes and pete mccormick and we're back at don carter's all-star lanes west and uh, what an exciting opening round match phil ferguson along with my broadcast partner marshall holman and marshall steve hoskins really took control of the match pretty early even though wayne webb bowled very well early on well wayne had the upper hand early and he got got a couple of good breaks but phil hoskins won because he made the best shots from the first frame through the 10th frame now steve hoskins moves on the match two in an exciting match pete mccordick and chris barnes will join him yeah, and Chris, Chris Barnes is the story. Uh, once again, just like last week, you know, he broke his toe. Bowling ball fell on his toe. He was able to somehow shake it off and continue to bowl, made the telecast, did the same thing this week. And in talking to him last week, I told Chris, I said, listen, why don't you just go home, relax, take some time off, you know, three, four, five weeks, let the toe heal up. Well, fortunately for Chris Barnes, he didn't listen to me. He came out here. He's going for another chance to win a title. So... Next week's advice for Chris Barnes, go to Chattanooga. Up to you, Phil. All right, thanks a lot, Marshall. And now we are set for match two from Dallas. 
The handshake. We'll have one winner out of this match. Moving on to the semifinal match. Three players and title match head to head. We take a look at Pete McCordick. Last win in Peoria in 1992. straighter and gets a strike, Marshall. Well, for me, it's a familiar look. Pete McCordick, one of the great bowlers in the 80s. Retired a few years back. Now the uh, regional director for the southwest region of the PBA. Chris Barnes making his second straight TV appearance. Beautiful style. Here it comes. Stubborn four pin for Barnes. And for Hoskins, he threw a, a great game to start with a 237 as he's now moved on. First shot, match two. Well, right back where he finished with a solid 10 on lane 45. Still making quality shots. Barnes switching balls, hard and straight at the four pin. Picks it up, so it's fair for Barnes. Pack them up and pay a fortune at the airport. McCordick a strike, and Hoskins now trying to pick up the 10 pin. All players have marked in the opening frame. For McCordick, he is not uh, bowled on the national tour for a long time. The last five or six years, and now he is Come out on the national tour. This is his third stop and gets a strike. And why is he coming out now, Marshall? Well, Pete wants to uh, let his, his wife, Paula, and his two, uh, two children see him bowl in the uh, Tournament of Champions. So he's going to requalify for the TSC and uh, wants them to be able to come and watch the hubby and dad bowl into TSC. Barnes, second frame. Just a 10 pin. It's amazing though, Barnes. Uh... Look at the style of Chris Barnes, the high back swing, and you'd think there'd be a lot of pressure on that toe as he releases the ball, but it really, it's almost been a blessing in disguise. He's kept his feet under him. He's been a little slower to the line. He's been all over that pocket all day long with a strike in the second for Barnes. Just amazing as he dropped the ball on his left foot, breaking a couple of bones last week. Had to have stitches, but uh, bowled through the pain, made the show, made the show again this week. Picks up the spare. He said compared to last week, it doesn't bother him hardly at all. I mean, it's uh, he's still a little wary when people walk by him. He sort of <laughs> picks his foot up and moves it off the side, but much better than last week. Yeah, so. Moving to third frame, and McCordick, early leader with a double. Classic style. Ball creeping high, leaving the four pin. And you can see McCorder because he was walking back, sort of moving his wrist. He was that's his indication that he turned the ball just a little early, causing it to go high. Barnes, a great collegiate player, amateur player. And one of the best on the Pro Tour now. Swings it out, Marshall, and gets it. Yeah, looking for his first strike, and there's a powerful Chris Barnes. Pretty confident looking, too. Florida picks up that spare. Ball the fourth ever 300 game on TV against Wayne Webb back uh, in Torrance in 1987. Hoskins could take the lead with a strike here in the third frame. Solid 10, solid 10 the last two times. There we go, he says. What a battle here in match two. Barnes down by 10, 11 out of Hoskins and just a single pin. Cordic Trails, our leader, marks the uh, second consecutive year at Don Carter's All-Star Lanes West Boy. They spent a couple million dollars to renovate a couple years ago. Beautiful facility. Very nice. 
Hold on. What happened, Marsh? High off his hand. Four, six, and seven. Now let's take a look at what's in the bag for Chris Barnes. Chris Barnes using the HPH purple, excuse me, using the purple power blitz. Four and a half inch pin, the small hole on the axis. This ball revs up in the mid lane with a strong arc to react down the lane. Well, it sure did react down the lane. So Barnes has a double. McCordick going for the two. And well, Barnes, Barnes not needing it. Needing the uh, target zone spare ball. Hopefully not going to need it all day, but should probably leave something. <laughs> well, McCordick going a little straighter, and Hoskins and Barnes are sending it out just a bit. And again, Hoskins has to back down. That's the second time uh, today he's been distracted. Not sure what's bothering Steve Hoskins, but strike here would give him a nine pin lead that's just the nine pin he trips out the four so kind of a really a pretty good break that draws him even with uh, with Barnes Corning trying to get back on track there he goes just a, no, just a better shot. It's been a long time since Pete's been in this position, so understandably a little bit nervous. Hoskins with the spare in the fourth frame. Barnes trying to make it three in a row. And there's Linda Barnes, Chris's wife, who's really quite a, quite a bull in her own right. A champion on the uh, ladies professional bowling tour. working on three in a row here. Get three in a row. Sends it out. Here it comes. Oh, he loved it. You know, Barnes hit this pair better than anybody during the week. He averaged over 257. Hoskins a little high. Last shot. Fifth frame. Well, he trips out the fourth pin, but he'll continue to move further left on the lane to get a little more oil. Right now, Hoskins, he's 10 pins down. McCormick, 24. Chris Barnes, he's your leader. Match two, the Brunswick Pro Source Don Carter Classic, and Chris Barnes has the midway lead. He is 10 up on Steve Hoskins. I like the Rams. I like Tennessee. All right, here's Pete McCormick. Oh, 10 pin falls out. But the seven pin stands on a quality shot by McCordick. Well, he saves himself from being open, but really needed a strike there to really get back into the match. Barnes to extend his lead. Sixth frame, working on three in a row. Oh, oh. Not that much. Wanted the ball to hook back into the pocket, but it actually got a little too much of the pocket, ended up hitting in that flat 10 zone. That's got a hook, and it does. <laughs> Barnes, your leader. Hoskins trails by nine, McCordick by 23. Match two. Hoskins to take the lead with a strike here in the sixth frame. Oh, love that off his hand. Can't believe the 10 pin didn't fall. The America's still Cup on ESPN2 resumes on Tuesday night. That's the America's, America's Cup on ESPN2 as McCormick sets it in the pocket. Able to get it to hold off, Marshall. And the players are kind of waiting for McCormick, McCormick, giving him an opportunity to get back into this match. Spare for Hoskins. He remains nine pins behind Barnes. 
You know, all three players still very much in this match. Barnes on top by nine. McCordick trails by 23. Barnes, the, certainly the complete player, uh, has it all. What a beautiful style. That'll get back. He's got a little bit of area out there, Phil. That's the bowler's friend. He can leak the ball out to the right further than even Hoskins, and he does that because his ball speed is slower. Hoskins working on a spare. Oh, now here it comes. Hoskins remaining in the pocket. Tough to carry this week. McCorda can make it two in a row. Got to hurry. He came in light the last time on lane 46. There's Patrick and Michael, Pete's uh, kids, and Paula, Pete's wife. Barnes with a possible 258. Hoskins possible 249. Boy, he's got to hurry. Jump around, be careful with that toe. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm thinking. <laughs> He's bouncing around out there. It's got to hurt. In between the two pins. Takes it up. You know, Barnes uh, told me that maybe uh, with the injured toe, it helped him slow down a little bit with the footwork the last few weeks, especially last week because a lot of oil on the lanes uh, may have helped him a bit. Yeah, as I said earlier, kind of a blessing in disguise, but I don't think he's going to increase the popularity of breaking toes anytime soon. <laughs> oh, Hoskins again with a chance on the right-hand lane to take the lead. Left a solid 10 last time on lane 50, 46. He's got a hook back. Gave that ball more room. Flipped it a little bit harder down the lane with a little more wrist lift. Knocks that 10 pin out. So Hoskins now has uh, taken the lead by one over Chris Barnes and Pete McCordick down 24 with a possible 215 for McCordick on top. Right now it looks like it's between Hoskins and Barnes. Well, McCordick really must strike out to get to 215. You know, maybe, maybe Barnes or Hoskins may have an open frame, but you wouldn't think that both of them would. Ten pin for McCordick. Family watching him, and they're rooting hard, but it doesn't look like it's going to be enough. Barnes now up in the ninth frame. That's a bunch. Big strike by Barnes. If you enjoy the PBA Tour, then you're going to love playing the new computer bowling game. PBA Tour Bowling 2 from Bethesda Softworks. The game features outstanding graphics, realistic ball and pin action, and PBA Tour players. PBA Tour Bowling 2 is a must for any true bowling fan. Now available at retail outlets or get more information by visiting bethsoft.com. Love playing the game. to take the lead to 11. Beautiful shot. Hoskins down on one knee. Following that shot, he has three in a row, and now on top by 11. And more importantly, he can't be shut out by Barnes. McCordick looking for a little credibility right now and finding nothing but a soft 10 pin. But he's got to feel good. I mean, it just got to be very proud of himself to make it this far after not being on, you know, the national tour level for quite quite a number of years. Barnes now up in the 10th. Can strike out for 238. Hoskins can strike out for 249. To cut the lead to one. How about that one? Power strike from Barnes. Five pin into the ball into the five pin, driving everything left, showing the power, the reaction of a man who knows 
he needed that one and probably the next one to have any chance. Last week he won uh, the match uh, in a thrilling match, 260 to 257 over Pete Weber. Well, he's in another good one now. He's a tape or something on the one finger. Trails by one pin. Just to cover the calluses, that piece of tape. Well, look at the roll on that ball, Marshall. Ooh, ball creeping up a little bit high. I thought he was going to leave a solid nine. As McCordick will finish the game. Watch the ball as it drives past the nine pin. Ball never touches that nine pin. Fortunately for this man, something did. He's in the lead. McCordick finished with a 190. Oswald 238 with a strike here for Barnes. White, Linda watches on. She, she knows what it's like in this position. Well, she does, and it's, it's actually more difficult watching than it is bowling. <laughs> he did all he could do. Good shot. 238 for Barnes. Hoskins up now. Dead, solid, perfect. He knows how that, what that means right there and the reaction of Linda. She loves it. Needs a strike, nine spare to tie. Got to have this one. He's got the first one. Nine spare to tie or strike here for the win. And boy, Hoskins looks cool. <laughs> Wasn't quite sure that was going to make it up, Marshall. But you're right, he looks cool. No problem. Well, can you, when's the last time Hoskins missed the pocket? That's right. I mean, he's just been been living in it, making quality shot after quality shot. Comes down to the 10th frame. Barnes did all he could do. Now it's up to Hoskins. Strike to win. And oh, ten pin. solid 10. And nothing more he could do. We have a tie if he makes the spear, Marshall. And what happens? Well, they go into a tie, then it's going to be a one-shot roll-off. Each, each bowler will throw one shot. One ball. At, at one ball until we come up with a winner. For Hoskins, he's got to be disappointed because he's just made super shots. Hasn't got the carry win and needed it. Needs a spare. Well, he knocked the Ted pin over that time. So one shot to decide the winner of this match. That's just what Barnes needs. Another, you know, another shot to get his <laughs> get his foot warmed up. I'll go first. I'll go first. All right, just one shot, not a complete frame. I understood he goes first. Two thirty-eight tie. Chris Barnes and Hoskins. One ball roll off to see who will move on, unless they both throw a strike or the same count, and we'll do it again. Barnes will go first. I look for Barnes to strike here, but I think Austin's going to strike too. Something on that right-hand lane. It's twice disturbed Hoskins and once Barnes as Linda looks on. say, all right, Mr. Hoskins, answer me that. Well, again, Hoskins has not missed the pocket, I don't believe, Marshall, in well, two games. He's up on the lane. He just left the solid 10 on. You know he's going to hit the pocket. Will it carry? Ball comes in light. He leaves the seven pin, and Chris Barnes is the winner. Tough break. We'll be back with the Brunswick scoreboard. Nice Tip, Marshall nice Holman has here. that in just a minute. <laughs> right according to my plan. Late. And we're back. Chris Barnes, sudden oh. death winner over Steve Hoskins, 238-238, one ball rolled off. He won a 10 to 9. Now here's my partner, Marshall Holman, with another score more with Brunswick Tip.
This week, we're going to teach you how to find your access point, and Ray Edwards from Brunswick is here to help us. But first, I'm going to get some lane oil on the surface of this ball. I've asked Marshall to throw a shot so that we can find his axis. When the ball comes back up from the ball return, you'll see there's a number of oil rings, and we want to take the one that's closest to the thumb and fingers and just start to trace that circle all the way around the ball. We've already done that with this ball here. Once we have the circle completed, we want to orient the ball so the circle's parallel to the table in the bottom half of the ball, then the point that's at the very top of the ball will be his axis. And we're going to take and put a sticker on here and have Marshall throw the, sh throw the ball again in order to make sure that this is actually his axis point. If you have a front stand behind you and watch that sticker as it comes off your hand, you'll see what we see right now with the sticker staying very steady, the ball rotating around that sticker, showing that that's actually your axis of revolution. Once you've found that axis point, that's going to be the same in every ball you ever drill. So next week when we come back, we're going to take the same ball and drill it two different ways relative to your axis point and show you how different those reactions can be. All right, thanks a lot, Marshall. Coming up here on the Pro Bowl Show on ESPN next Sunday at 12.30, Holiday Bowl, Brainer, the Chattanooga Open. Steve Jarrell's tossed a 300-game last year on uh, his way to winning the championship. Following Sunday, February 13th, 12 o'clock start, Bowlers Club in Latham, New York. Parker Bone, the defending champion. And then the PBA heads to Southwick Lanes in Toledo for the year's first major event, the PBA National Championship. Once again, at Southwick Lanes, Sunday, February 20th, 12.30 start. Coming up, match three, Chris Barnes, Norm Duke, and Mark Scroggins. And we're back here at Don Carter, All-Star Lanes West, Dallas, Texas, ready for the semifinal match. Chris Barnes survived the previous match and now goes up against Norm Duke and uh, Mark Scroggins, who really doesn't compete a lot on the national tour. No, he doesn't, but, but a great bowler. His Twin brother Mike, PBA champion. Opening shot, semifinal match. Just simply a poor shot. You know, last week, Barnes won the, with a 260 and then came back the next match and had problems. So, see if he can do a little better this week. A lefty from Amarillo. Right in the pocket, and Marshall with all the players now, with eight players, does something to the lanes. Well, the lanes, the lanes break down even faster. Difficult spare, but picks it up. So really, the top seeded player really has an advantage. Well, I, I certainly think so. And you know, we always, as a, as a player, you always want to qualify number one. That's where Steve Jarrett says, but with eight men, even more important. Norm Duke, 35, out of Claremont, Florida. Winner of 16 national titles, four regional championships. Come on, Come on. And he sets an inner, gets a strike. He can play anywhere on the lane. Well, very versatile player. And Duke living in Claremont, Florida, but originally from Texas. So uh, a lot of family here watching. Barnes with a spare to start this semifinal match. Looks better down the lane. Now comes in a light. <sighs> too much. He said too much. The ball just went too far down the lane, too long. Scroggins. The West Texas a &M College Bowling Team coach. And he gets just the 10 pin. In fact, the team ranked number three in the nation. And a bad break for Scroggins. When a professional hits the pins light like that, usually it's a strike. It's up to spare for Barnes in the second frame. Scroggins averaged 221 on this pair. Tossed a 300 game, uh, one of six this week. In fact, he tossed two of them this week. Picks up the spare. Part of the Go Network. Go.com. Duke sets it in there for a big double to start this semifinal match. 
Takes an early 10 pin lead, a confident stroke from Norm Duke. Barnes up now in the third frame. Trying to get his first strike of the match. And uh, does able to kick out the 10. They just spotted the field a couple of couple of frames. <laughs> Sprocket is playing further right on the lane than uh, Forkel, the previous lefty. And uh, not quite. And should Mark win today, he would qualify for the Brunswick World Tournament of Champions this fall. Duke, in the third, you had mentioned about being from this area originally. He said uh, he's bowled 18 years in the city and has been uh, very frustrated. He wants to win in front of his hometown, original hometown fans. And he's got three in a row, and he starts off. Well, he never so much as made a telecast here in previous years. And, uh, you know, this is a man who's made numerous telecasts all over the country. Turn back and picks it up. In fact, with Duke, he is making now his 63rd TV appearance. And not to make a telecast in this area. Well, he hasn't made it in Texas at all. You know, we in recent years, since, or in the years since we've been on the tour with... Uh, Duke's Grand been on the Prairie. tour. They bowled in Grand Prairie. They bowled, bowled here. They've been in Houston. Austin. Austin, all over Texas. So uh, he finally figured it out. Barnes really cuffing his wrist. That's how he makes that ball hook back. Double for Barnes. Another shot where Barnes was fortunate. Ah, wow. There's Barnes's cup wrist grip. This ball once again looked like it might be a solid nine, but took care of all of them. Scroggins up in the fourth. Sending it, and yes, Texas Bird Dog for Scroggins. <laughs> Watch the five pin go to the head pin go to the right. And now the head pin comes back, takes care of the seven. About time. Duke trying to make it the first four. Oh yeah! A late four pin from Duke. He was happy to get the four pin to fall, but boy, he knows knows how fortunate he was. Watch the four pin, second from the left. It falls over. Four in a row for Duke. Now Barnes, down by 21 Scroggins. Trails by 31. Barnes up in the fifth. Working on a double. Look a bunch. <laughs> he wasn't sure if that was gonna get back. Just in the nick of time. You'll see the ball driving hard back into the pocket. Five pin going left, taking care of the four and the seven. And a relieved Chris Barnes, now with three in a row. Scroggins trying to make it two in a row. Trying to keep pace, somewhat with Duke. Come on! Oh, solid eight. Beautiful shot from Scroggins, but the ball finished in front of the eight pin. Not unlike what Barnes has been doing on some of his shots, finished in front of the nine, but no help to knock it down. Duke caught fire the final 16 games. In fact, he started 19th with 16 to go. <laughs> oh, great. Distracted. That's hard to do. Takes a little strength. <laughs> Just top of the line. With that ball out in front of you. But Duke has four in a row. Little extra incentive for a 300 game, ten thousand dollars extra, courtesy of the PBA. As Scroggins picks up the spare. Well, there's Mark's wife, Lisa. I mean, excuse me, Mark's wife, Kim. I'm sorry, Kim. And his folks. Turning it around. Five pin will not respond. Boy, the pins have been flying all over. You think that one would go down? It's still wiggling, but 
Cannon falling. So Barnes now down by just 10. Trying to make it four in a row. To tie up the match. Soft 10. Flat 10. Duke picks up the spare in the fifth, so Norm Duke has the midway lead. Back with more in a minute. Welcome back. Norm Duke still on top of the ball field frame. Scroggins now has a double. He threw a strike in the sixth. Come back uh, now with a strike in the seventh. Barnes, spare in the sixth, trying to pick up the stubborn four pin. Duke threw a strike in the sixth. So Duke still on top, leading by 12. Looking to extend the lead. Trying to make it two in a row. He started off this semifinal match four in a row, then a spare. Back with a strike. Well, that ball squirted off his hand, leaving a very, very difficult 2-5-8 spare to convert. And that put a little bit of bounce into Barnes's step. Gets him right back into the match. State Boulder brings it back. And similar reaction for Barnes as the ball does not come back to the pocket. Tough spare. Went straight at it. He made it. Do you recommend going straight at it or cross lane for the amateurs? I think it's it's easier to hook at that spare, but I wouldn't argue with Norm Duke. Picks up the spare. Barnes in the eighth frame. Here's the Duke spare conversion. Very straight with the ball. Covering all the pins with the ball and relieved to knock him down. Scroggins right now very much back in the match. This is for three in a row. And Scroggins has had some tough breaks. Well, soft seven pin for Scroggins. Duke up by 13 over Barnes. Eighth frame for Duke. Again, he sends it out, Marshall. Well, he's lost something. Whether it's the, the lift off the ball or the lane oil conditioner is, is going down the lane further and the back ends are tightening up, something's gone wrong for Duke. Scroggins makes the seven pin. Well, Scroggins picks it up. His last television show was in 1993, finished uh, fifth in Tucson. So it's been a while for Scroggins on the telecast. Now Duke, again, a difficult spare. He's not maybe the best spare shooter out here. He is. Great spare from Duke because he takes the head pin into the, into the 10. Think you like that one? Couple of clutch spares for Duke. Boy, and the pocket is just gone away. <sighs> Tilt it, it doesn't make the corner. I go up the pack of it, it doesn't make. Barnes trying a lot of different things. Nothing working right now. It means he's lost. Scroggins in the ninth frame. And uh, pocket. Uh, he's the only one hitting the pocket, Phil, but he can't make all 10 pins fall over. And He's disappointed. He knows he's got a chance in this game, but he just can't make him fall. He leaves the 10. Former rookie of the year, Barnes. Difficult 3, 6, 9, 10. Boy, some great spare shooting out here, Marshall. Linda approves. Chris wondering what to do. Duke has a possible 245, and Barnes a 222, and Scroggins 217. That's really Duke's uh, game to win or lose, Marshall. No doubt. Duke strikes in the ninth frame. He's in 185 through eight. Maintains that 13-pin lead. And for Barnes, 222, the best he can do. It would at least force Norm Duke to get up and mark in the 10th frame. 
Light last time on lane 46. Now, Messenger, Bird Dog. The game's a disaster. Call it what you want. It tried to get back, but in front. Well, you mentioned last week, Barnes. Superb game, 260 out the gate, then struggled in match two. Well, it's happened once again, and I believe it's got to be the transition of the lane oil going down the lane, changing from game to game. Scroggins gets it. He can still shoot 217. And mathematically not eliminated. Barnes a spare now in the 10th. He can shoot 211. They're all battling to see who's going to face Steve Jaros, who led this tournament wire to wire. First time he's done that in his career. This shot will determine whether Duke has to show up in the 10th frame or not. Well, there they go. This is about time. <laughs> he's pulled up. Really a solid game. He's been in the pocket. Family looks on. Barnes finishing up here with a possible 211, uh, 209. <laughs> Tell you what, that's five different things. None of them work. Now you. Well, Mama said there'd be days like this. Scroggins on lane 45, his last shot. Look at that. That head pin come over and just crush the seven. Family likes it. Well, oh, that's plenty for Scroggins. He needed seven on that to force. Norm Duke to Mark. Duke needs any kind of a spare or strike. Not over yet. Well, if, if Norm Duke can't make the seven pin in this situation, then uh, Mark Scroggins will indeed continue on to the title match. But I said it earlier, I, I consider Norm Duke the best spare shooter on tour. This ball won't hook at all. A lot of pressure games on 16 titles. Well, no <laughs> doubt about it. Yeah, he, he hit it right on the label, right in the middle of the pin. <laughs> now it's just a matter of three. Three pins would give him 218. Now you have to check a couple of scores, not just one. So Duke with just three pins to win. No problem. So Norm Duke is the winner here of the semifinal match. And it will be Duke moving on now to take on our top-seeded player from Bolingbrook, Illinois, Steve Jarrus in our championship match. Then we're back here at Don Carter's All-Star Lanes West. Hoskins in match one. And then Barnes. And uh, Duke survives to take on Steve Jarrus for the championship. Well, let's take a look at some other finishers, Phil. Jason Couch just missing by 29 pins. And Walter Ray Williams, Jr., he had a great run, but knee sort of gave out on the last couple of games. Brian Voss up there, along with Parker Bone the third. Danny Wiseman, the smooth stroker, having a good finish. Greg Kemp, local player, used to tour. Now he has a job for a living. Some of our other finishers, Roger Pauker, all having a good week here in Dallas. So Jarris leading wire to wire, Marshall. Going up against Duke for the title. Oh, oh got him flipping up. Oh, uh, Duke's, got it, Duke's got it going his way. Crowd getting into it now. Steve Jarris as tournament leader, just one in four with a 209 average in five appearances. The 34-year-old out of Bolingbrook, Illinois. 6'1, 185. Great game. Confident strike from Jarris to start out the match. Look at Steve Jarris. A nice shoulder high backswing. Really a kind of game that you would encourage just about anybody to try and emulate. You said earlier, one in four as a leader, and even in more pressure when he led wire to wire. Uh, 
That is a double to start off this championship match. You know, we show you Steve's wife, but uh, she's got a couple of eight-month-old twins she's taking care of, so she's here in the building, but uh, not on camera. She's That's, running around. That would be June, Jarris. Duke trying to match Jarris. And does. Duke creeping up. He's 10th on the all-time money list. Walter Ray Jr., Williams Jr. up on top with 2,400,000. And Kevin M. Marshall home in seventh. Still on the list. Well, second page. Yeah, but drop it like a rock. <laughs> so Duke trying to make it the first three. Could it be his day? Pins falling his way. Can we call that the Texas Tickler? Okay. Ball just barely touches the head pin. Pins collapse in the reaction. Thank you. Jarris with three in a row. Now let's take a look in the bag with Steve Jarris. Using the HPD with a four and a half inch pin. There's no extra hole. This ball gives Steve mid lane control. And because of the cover stock and the layout, it gives him a strong arc and a great reaction. Spare ball, which he doesn't want to use, that's the Brunswick target zone. Well, Jarris led wire to wire. He also picked up the 710 this week. It's kind of his week. Although, what a match, four in a row. And Duke has three. Well, neither player has missed. Jarris's shots have been superb. Duke's had a little bit of help from somewhere. Catching that light hit the last frame. And light and kicks it out. Four in a row for both players here in the title match. Check out the PBA's website at pbatour.com for the latest information, including schedules for upcoming tournaments, Brunswick's insiders report links to other great bowling sites and a recap of today's championship round all that and more at pbatour.com well, phil i was just given a note from butch soper our statistician he says he crossed with duke during the tournament and said that duke got wrapped to death couldn't get anything going his way maybe there's a little bit of a payback he's carried a few early here oh. It's easy to carry when you hit him there. <laughs> wow. Jarrett's average 226 on this television pair with a high game of 299. Boy, Jarrett's is absolutely locked in. Where Duke is using all the pocket. Jarris is just high flush. Well, Jarris last year, Chattanooga tossed a 300 game on television. And next week's tournament's Chattanooga. He said he was just getting ready for next <laughs> week. <laughs> what a way to do it. <laughs> next week we'll be in Chattanooga. Brainerd Bowl trying to make it the first of six. And he does it, kicking out the seven pin. So Steve Jarris with the first six. Norm Duke with the first five. Well, we've got a barn burner here. Duke with the first five. Jarris with the first six. Duke up now in the sixth frame. We're going to back it. He's got it. Both players with the first six. I'd like to show you what Norm was doing during the commercial break. A little bit of mental imagery. Thinking about what he needed to do when he came back. Well, it worked. Yeah, it's been working all right. Well, a beautiful sunny day here in Dallas today. A bit uh, chilly in the 30s, but red hot on the lanes. Duke trying to make it seven. More importantly, for the lead. Well, you could see halfway down the lane, you could see it in his expression as he was standing there. He knew the ball didn't come off his hand properly. It did hit the pocket. 
But watch the six pin as it just lays in the channel. Doesn't come back out to knock out the 10. Our first spare opportunity, the championship match, it comes in the seventh frame. It's tough to throw the first six and still be down in the match, but uh, Duke, picks, Duke picks up that 10 pin, and now Jarris with the first six. $10,000 bonus for a perfect game. Jarris half the way there. And the string stops at six for Steve Jarris. He leaves the four pin. This match all even in the seventh frame. Jarris with the spare ball. And I'll tell you what, that's why they use spare balls, folks. That ball was way left off his hand. Doesn't have any friction. It stayed there. If he'd used his strike ball, he'd have flagged that four pin to the left. All even as we head into the eighth frame. Jarrett's blowing it looked like in his finger holes and thumb holes. A little moisture, a little tacky feel. Better feel of the ball. Well, that's exactly where he wants to be living right there. Flush in the pocket. Duke up in the eighth with a strike. Match will remain even. And a 10 pin. Solid 10 for Duke. Now finds himself one pin behind Jarris. Duke had mentioned winning here in front of his hometown fans is something that he's always wanted to do and has not been able to do it. And Jarris making it tough on Duke. Picks up the spare. Oh, it's the big one, the big Super Bowl. We're just hours away. The biggest event in television, Super Bowl 34, live from Atlanta. The Rams meet the Titans for the NFL championship. Marshall, you're going with the Rams. I still. Hey, <laughs> Kurt, Kurt Warner, he's my man. <laughs> All right, I'm sticking with the Titans. Duke in the ninth. 268 possible for Duke. And Come on. There they go. A very, very late seven pin falling over for Norm Duke. Got to keep that pressure on Jarris. Well, Watch the balls. It comes in a little bit light, Phil. Seven pin. It's just going to fall over. And you want to see concentration? Spell it Norm Duke. Jarris possible 279. Duke possible 268. Oh, he's on a near perfect game. Well, he certainly has been, he's been flush in the pocket every shot except for one, and that was, that was a, a sweeper strike that he threw a couple of frames ago. Left the four pin in the seventh. Coming out in the tenth, what does he need to wrap it up here as he steps up on the He line? needs two strikes. With Duke's possible 268, Jarris can get into the 270s with two strikes. And we've got another opportunity for a tie. Again, right there. Well, here's the biggest shot of the week. Jarris has never, ever trailed in this tournament. He has a chance to wrap it up right here with a strike. Second ball in the 10th. If he goes nine spare, that would be 268. And Duke would have to strike out to tie him. Again, Jarris has led the entire week. This is the one right here. Not only doesn't he strike, got around it. You can hear him say he got around the ball, turned it early, right through the nose, leaves the six and the eight. You'll see it. Bad shot from Jarris. Duke has a chance to strike out to win. Well, now he, two strikes and nine, he'd win by a pin. Jarris with 266. So Duke, a double and nine. And he'll pick up his 17th title. And I've been in this situation before. Duke had to feel like he was shut out, had no chance. This really re-energizes you. Got 
one. There's one of them. It was a long time ago, 1977 in Chicago. Pete Couture had me had me locked out. He threw a five count. I needed three strikes to win. It just it just was like you could. I felt like I had him before I even got him. We'll see how Duke reacts here. The second shot in the tenth. You can see, uh, look in his eyes. So badly he wants to win here. And what a crushing defeat it would be for Jarris. Must have it. The line hit kicks it out, but it's not over, Marshall. Well, he needs nine pins to win. What a match. 266 for Jarris. With nine, Duke would shoot 267. Nine count. And Duke is your winner. Oh, some great bowling this afternoon. The pocket has not been that difficult to find. Bodes well for Duke's opportunity. Oh, yes, that's it. That's it. Nine was all he needed. Norm Duke, he's the winner. 267 to Steve Jarris's 266. We'll be right back. What an unbelievable title match, Norm Duke. Your winner, 267 to 266. And now let's take a look back at today's key moment thus far. It was the Ginkoba moment of concentration, and it was Norm Duke in the 10th frame. The last shot needs nine pins to win. Look at the concentration on his face. He got the right rotation. There goes the five pin. Just needed nine. He got it. And that's today's Ginkoba moment of concentration. Think better. Think Ginkoba. Congratulations to Norm Duke, winner of the 2000 Brunswick Pro Source Don Carter Classic. Next, next week we'll be in Chattanooga. Catch all of the action at 1230. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com, part of the Go Network, Go.com.